we were chasing the ball around uh, a little too much last night. And I thought they, they got us back scrambling too, too many possessions and give them credit. They made, they stepped up and made some of the threes and some of the guys that we weren't considered hot shooters came in and, and made, made some threes, multiple threes. So, so this could be a little bit of that. And, and one of those nights um, where guys that don't normally make them at a high percentage stepped up and made them. And was uh, Rui able to do the five on five today as planned? And how did he look? Yeah, Rui's, um, he's been working hard last couple mm -hmm. of days with our staff. You know, he's going to play tomorrow night. So that's great news. That's a, that's a good boost that, and that we need. He gives us stability. He gives us just a, like a calming effect, uh, confidence. Uh, and he's done a great job as a, as a young player last year. And, and we don't, we get to see all the improvements he has made. Uh, he's not going to play a lot of minutes, but uh, I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, maybe some some in the you know 20 20 range. But it's just good to have him back. Uh, he's been looking really good, and I'm glad. You know, it's you're always concerned with anybody that has an injury or you know with his eye irritation. And, but it's, he feels great and he looks great, and we're we're welcoming him back tomorrow night. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, in the second half yesterday, you went with Berton starting the second half. Uh, what, did, what did you think of that after uh, seeing it out there for a half? Well, a couple of things. We, in that second quarter, we missed, uh, I think we were one for 11 in threes with one really not a good one. I think Neto's first one in the left corner in front of their bench where he shot fake to close out and they end up taking the three. But other than that, the other 10 threes that we were, you know, one for 10 at that at, in the second quarter were all great looks. And we needed a spark offensively. I thought that would give us as a group. It did initially and then they, they jumped on us um, and also give him a spark. You know, BB is not the shooter that uh, in the last few games or what he is going forward. He's, he's an elite one of the best shooters in the world. So um, don't think we're going to go with that starting lineup, but it will, it will, um, it gives us, you know, that could be a good closing, closing lineup when, when you have Rui, uh, TV, uh, Brad, Russell, and, and, and Danny, that could be a pretty good closing lineup. Or not Danny, uh, Rui and TV. Ava. He's got just wondering what the focus was in today's practice after last night. Uh, film. We watched a bunch of clips on both ends of the floor. Uh, defensively, some of the things that we have to do, some of the adjustments we can make, some of the things that we've been working on that we have to continue to improve. I thought defensively take away, you know, a few you know, bad possessions, but I thought defensively we were pretty solid. Offensive, offensively, it got to us. Uh, we didn't make shots in that second quarter. We turned the ball over over 20 times, gave them 23 points, uh, and that's you know that's been a pretty good for us. Not turning the ball over, uh, we got to do a better job of taking care of it. So those are the things that we focus on in the film, and then we focus on some of the offensive things and some of the defensive concepts that we had uh, with some of the guys that did not did not participate, but most of the guys. I think we had eight guys that uh, did some four and four stuff. When you look back at the the stretches of games where you guys have done um, really well, what stands out to you? What's kind of the through line in the offense when you look at those stretches? Um, that was the thing that we focused on today. Don't get tired of what's what's um, working, regardless if you make or miss the shot. If you you can't get bored with it, uh, and then when we when we get into our offense. Uh, and everybody is knows it, um, and then we have some players are still trying to learn uh, some of the things that we're doing offensively. But when we're, when we're really good, we're moving the ball. We have great spacing, quick decisions, uh, and that's what we just got to keep focusing on. I know there's there's times last night uh, I thought our shots, uh, our missing shots, kind of kind of bothered us a little bit. Um, we didn't step up to the next shot and. 
and shoot it with confidence. Uh, but I think we can't play that way. We got to, you know, work on the things every day that, you know, use it uh, to the best of um, our abilities. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Chris Miller. Hey, Scott, with the news that Rui's going to play tomorrow, how much are you giving yourself a gauge, you and the coaching staff, on when you guys can be whole, what this team could look like potential-wise? I'm, I'm still excited about the group. Um, and then after, you know, before, before the, today's uh, session with the group, I was excited. But at, during and after, I'm more excited because they, they came out with the right attitude the right mindset of just coming in and working every day. Uh, you can't have a roller coaster, you know, work ethic. And we haven't shown that. So I'm excited about the group. I know we have some challenges uh, uh, to start the season and we're not, or none of us are happy with, with being 0-4. Uh, but with Rui coming back, uh, I think we can, we can get better as the season goes on and, you know, really gives us, you know, 30 to 32 minutes of really good play from that position. Uh, we don't have to do it as, as, as a committee. Uh, and then we'll see how, you know, continue how Russell and, and Brad continues to play together. That's only going to get better. And then how everybody else with the group of those two really dynamic guards play together. And that's only going to get better as well. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's game. And, you know, now that we're going to have a chance to, uh, to be healthy and stay healthy is important. And one question about Brad. Have you noticed in year nine, obviously everybody throws the kitchen sink at him defensively. Have you noticed it being a little harder for him to get, you know, open looks with the way teams are defending him? Well, I, I think that's um, one, one thing I've noticed the last four years of being with him that he's, he has seen it all and he's still had success just about everything that there's thrown at him. Um, but now that we have some, uh, really good players around him. I think once we start making some of these shots that we know that we can make, I think the defenses are going to be in a tougher position that they, they've been in the last couple of games. And, and, and Brad understands that, uh, but he still, he still fi figures out a way to, to produce and a uh, great player. Uh, he's been, he's been great. He hasn't made his threes that as he wants, uh, as he will, uh, and it's also, it's, uh, our guys are still trying to get their legs under, 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 under them. And, and, you know, Brad's no different. He's going to, he's going to be a high 30, low 40s, three point shooter as, as this season kind of wears on. We'll take a couple more, Zach. Hey coach, um, is Rui starting tomorrow and how is his conditioning? I know you said he's going to play in the 20 minute range, but uh, this wasn't a muscular injury or anything like that. Is this why he can come back faster than projected? Um, yeah, I mean, every time we, every time somebody gets hurt, we try to give out a, a timetable, but it's, it's not, it's not perfect science. I mean, we don't know. Everybody's different. Everybody responds different to treatment and medication, but he's responded well. Um, we're glad, I mean, because I was, I was anticipating maybe another week or so, um, but it's great to have him back. Uh, we wouldn't put him out there if we knew he wasn't ready, uh, but he's been really, really uh, ramping it up the last five days, maybe even six. Uh, and then yesterday, I thought he had a great workout. Today was a little lighter because we got some back-to-backs coming up. Um, but it's great to have him back. Uh, I love coaching him. Uh, uh, he hasn't he hasn't played um, with Russell yet, and that's going to give uh, another important piece in the toolbox. And uh, what Rui Rui brings, he brings that that really consistent play. And he's, he's a shot maker. He can guard multiple defender or multiple offensive players on the defensive end. We can. We can have, I think we can have better success on some of our switches because he can, he can stay in front and also strong enough to, to battle some of the bigger, bigger players in the league. Last question from Quentin. Hey, Scott. How much of a wrench was thrown into your plans coming into the season, specifically for your lineups with Rui going out, you know, with that eye to start the season? 
does that kind of cause you to like really have to scramble to find other ways to supplement that? Like how, how big of an impact has that really had on all the lineups that you've, that you've experimented with? Yeah. I mean, there's no question. It's, it's a, it affects it. We didn't, you don't anticipate, um, you know, guys getting hurt. If you have to prepare and you have to have that next man mentality up, I think, um, uh, ESOC has done a, a, a solid job. We, the minutes were not all on him. We definitely scrambled to play um, some different lineups where we won't have to do that once we get back. And it's more of a traditional, uh, like almost like a traditional, I guess, traditional modern day now because Rui can guard one through four and he can now he can step out and make threes. Plus, he can score. He can score at the block and low, or smaller players. So, it definitely, it's going to help us. Um, there's also going to be some, you know, adjustment. He's not going to play heavy minutes, but he's going to play a good amount of minutes to get some good rhythm coming back. But we'd like him to get up to up to speed pretty quick. And also, I'm not sure if you answered this question last night, but Brad was visibly distraught throughout the the game. Russell Westbrook post game was visibly distraught. What message did you kind of send to them after the game in the locker room and how those conversations go? Well, I, I, I talk to the players. Um, I don't hold anything back. I just tell them how I feel, the, the truth. And the bottom line is, I just said last night, we're all in four. All of us have been through tougher times in our lives. Uh, them being all, all zero and four. Uh, not happy about it. We're not just like just throwing it under the rug. We're pissed. We have an edge to us. And they're the leaders of the team, and they need to have that edge. I like that edge. And our players responded uh, today. Uh, you can respond by, you know, just clamming up, or you can you can step up and, and, and take the challenge. And I think our guys are going to continue to do that. Um, we, that there's no question we, we want to get a win. Uh, you can't get to two unless you get the first one. But I know that I know them well. I know both of them extremely well. They're not going to be happy with losses. They can they can get 40s and 50s and and throw up a, a, a good offensive game. But if they're we're not winning, they're not going to be happy. That's not how they wire. Uh, it's just more communication. You know, it starts from the top, bottom, and everything. No matter what, uh, coming out of Possessions come out of come out of timeouts. We got to be on a constant head on swiveling, constant communication out there with each other, and it all comes with time. You know, we all try to still figure out how to play with each other and everything, but still doesn't give an excuse for a communication standpoint. We still got to have that intact at all times. Chris Miller. Hey Thomas, in terms of your energy level, man. Do you feel like when, when you are engaged early in the game like that, that it kind of permeates the rest of the starters? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, because I know a lot of times Russ gives off a lot of good energy, a lot of good vibes that we need. And so does Brad as well. You know, Brad's a carrier of this team. And you know, I try to come in and bring that energy and that good, you know, that good energy and that grit for this team to help, you know, help put us to the way that we want to go to. Quentin. What's up, TB? Yeah. So you really answered the call on defense specifically, you know, your one-on-one matchups in the post. You're playing against some, some solidified bigs here early in the season, and the slate just continues to get deeper every single game. How much pride do you take in just really going out there and banging with who, you know, people around the NBA feel are the top upper echelon solidified bigs in the NBA? Well, I love it. I take pride in that, you know, there's one I wanted to take pride in, you know, coming in from last year to this year was taking pride in that one-on-one -on -one defense. And, I, you know, I really cherish and relish those moments that I go against those guys because it's just, that's how you get respect. And from my own standpoint, from my own, like, personal goals, I feel great about that because I want to take that challenge on for me. I feel like that's a next step for my improvement in my game. Appreciate you. Ava? Hey, Thomas, um, coming out of the locker room last night, I think a lot of um, 
well, I think Brooks and, and the other guys we talked to were really stressing togetherness and how togetherness was such a central message to what you guys spoke about. Why do you think that was just the, the primary thing you guys talked about, or was it, maybe it wasn't, I don't know, you let me know. I mean, the biggest thing about togetherness is, you know, we're all we have. You know, we're going against 29 other teams, and 29 other teams are going to try and go out there and, you know, and beat us. And all we can do is, you know, hang our hats on ourselves and how hard we play. So we have to build that togetherness. And, you know, when we're losing, it seems like it's the worst thing ever. But, like, when we're winning, it's going to be – it's going to feel great. So you got you got to go through those ups and downs in those in those courses of the season. And when you guys have teams in bunches like you have with Chicago and Orlando, does it how does it change the preparation from I guess what it usually is? Does it allow you to focus a little bit more on what you guys are doing rather than trying to you know t- talk about schemes and stuff for the other team? Well, we do both. Like we have to talk about the schemes and everything, but also focus on what we're doing. You know, there's a lot of times that we take ourselves out of out of our games and our position sometimes because I think sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and that's where we that's where the togetherness and the bond comes in together where we have to, you know, trust each other out there on the court. Thanks, Thomas. Chase, you have another? Yeah. Um, Thomas, I know we've asked you this question periodically, but when it comes to Screen setting, now that you've played a few games this season, um, where would you evaluate where you're at in that regard? Uh, I think my screens are pretty good. They got me on a couple moving screens that are kind of questionable, but uh, there's always still room for improvement. You know, I feel like I still got to get Brad open a lot more, you know, for an open shot because there's a lot of guys on the other team that get open shots, but Brad and other guys on our team are always getting hit, you know, always struggling to get open. So I got to help him out even more right right now. This time is not just one thing we can pinpoint. Uh, I think it's just the, the constant little mistakes we continue to make, and we have to learn from them. You know, I think that's the biggest thing: is learning from our mistakes and uh, and correcting them. You know, I think Rui being an implementer tomorrow is great for us. Uh, it gives us another threat on the floor. Um, you know, he's he's one of our best players, so we obviously need him. Um, but I don't think it'll misconstrue anything. I don't think it'll mess up the, the continuity or the flow of the game or anything like that. You know, Rui's a very adaptive person. We're all adaptive. We all are able to to do so. You know, and it's just a it's just a matter of our defensive end, I think, and just cleaning up some stuff on offense in terms of our spacing. Uh, but defensively, just having that the knack of being on the same page, talking and communicating, and uh, and accepting the challenges. You know, uh, collectively as a team and individually. Better. One question about you and, and getting your offense off where you could be more efficient. Do you feel like you're seeing more teams throwing everything at you as you did maybe the first eight years you've been in the league? 100%, yes. Um, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like teams are making it, I won't say, yeah, they are making it hard, but I feel like they're making it more difficult for me on the offensive end just in terms of getting open, getting the ball, creating, getting the shot off. Like, I don't think I've gotten really any too many clean looks at three, like, that I've loved. I, maybe the first one from Chicago yesterday, I was wide ass open some way, somehow. But I know that I won't get a lot of those throughout the course of the year. Um, so it's just basically trying to pick my spots in those situations, which is a lot of times you guys see me, I'm in the mid range. I'm, in my package and teams are forcing me to kind of do that because they're loading up, they're loading up the weak side, you know, they're dropping the ball screens, you know, they're just sending two on the ISO. So it's making my, making life a little bit difficult, but I expected it. Uh, and I think once we, once we start knocking down shots, you know, that takes a lot of pressure off me too. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, Scott said there was a pretty extensive uh, film session today. What were kind of the overarching lessons and what was the tone of it? Uh, just a little, the little mishaps we continue to do on defense, like fixing our switching, um, accepting the challenges, boxing out, uh, you know, doing the little things that really matter. You know, defense is all about your will and what you have to want to guard. You know, you have to want to stop your man, you have to want to stop the other team. So, you know, I think it's us having a challenge channel that up here 
individually and as a team. Like running the film, we see, you know, our late rotations. I've had one or two, like late rotations. You know, we call them old moments. Like we can't have those. Like we can't, we can't do that. So we're not a team that can just flip on a switch. We have to know what we're doing when we come in the game before we come to the game. Like, and we have that. We have that preparation. So it's on us as a team, as players, to kind of, you know, get out there and get the job done. And uh, speaking of defense, um, what have you seen from Denny on that end of the floor? It seems like he's doing some things we don't usually see from rookies. Like what? What do you see that we don't see? <laughs> well, his ability to contest uh, without fouling, I feel like, is, um, is something that usually guys take a few years to learn. But you know better than me. So what do you, what do you think? I don't know about, I don't know about that one, <laughs> I feel like contest without fouling is that we learned this very young. It's, uh, he's he's going to be very good for us, but we have to understand the game has, it's it's moving super fast for him, moving super fast for all our young guys. And we just have to be somewhat, we have to be patient. You know, we have to understand that, yeah, it's going to, we, we're throwing guys into the fire, but at the same time, Denny's 19. You know, he hasn't played in the NBA for long. You know, he doesn't know the tendencies of a lot of guys, you know, and he's holding his own, which is great. You know, but it, the challenges are only going to get difficult, you know, and much, much more harder. So our job is just to continue to keep him level-headed, continue to make sure he prepped the right way for, you know, for every night. Um, but he's doing the, he's doing a good job so far, like you said. I'm not going to sit here and say his contest is, is like, remarkable because that's, that's what he's supposed to be. Fred? Hey, Brad. Uh what, what specifically do you think you, you specifically can do on the court to help try to turn things around? A lot. I can do a lot more than what I'm doing. That's for sure. I can be better on uh, both ends, guarding guys, getting back in transition, rebounding more. And ultimately, for me, stop turning the damn ball over. Like, get a shot up every time. I'm not worried about my shot at all. I'm averaging 30 points without making threes. So imagine if I start making threes. So scoring isn't my problem. Um, it's kind of figuring out how to get guys involved, how to get guys some easier shots, um, how to get the offense moving. You know, a lot of times, sometimes I feel like we're just standing and watching, standing and, you know, kind of ball watching. Uh, so how do I keep guys involved and, in, you know, feeling involved in the game, you know, with still being aggressive. So it's a work in progress, but, uh, you know, I always, you know, I critique myself hard than anybody. So I still have a lot more I can do. And I'll, and I'll definitely continue to give it. Ava, Brad, um, Scott last night said something where with the losses, it's kind of different things that are cropping up in every game. Is there a root issue that you guys can focus on? Um, and I guess if not, like how how difficult does that make it to pinpoint the things you guys need to do? That's what's, that's what's tough about it. It's not just one root problem. If it was one root problem, I think that would be, you know, pretty simple to figure out. You know, you get back to the basics, you get to the root, I mean, out the root of the problem, and, you know, you go from there. But it's kind of a mix of a few things here and there. And it's not just on offense, it's on defense too, you know. And it's, it's how do we get out of that? You know, we're the only ones who's going to get us out of that, you know, this funk in a way. So, um, you know, it's, it's frustrating, but it's not like, it's not the end all be all, you know, it's not like, oh man, the world's coming to an end. We don't have that feeling in here. Like nobody's like mad at their teammate or hates the next man. Like it's not that type of emotion or feeling. Like it's, I feel like everybody's pissed off. Like, and I feel like that's a good thing. Everybody's pissed off. We have won. And, you know, we're kind of channeling in that energy and focus to, to better in ourselves on the court. Uh, we had a great practice today, great film session. So, uh, you know, those are just stepping stones that are just helping us get better. You know, we got to take it each and every day as a day to get better, no matter what it looks like. Do they just have footballs lying around the facility? No, this is my personal football. I, you know, I come from a football background. I have one in my locker. Uh, every now and then, I just pull it out, play catch with the guys, get different, switch the things up around it. All right. You know, the football team has some openings, so just wondering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they, I heard they need a quarterback. I, I might be able to go out there for a week and see what I can do. All only dump downs, check downs, nothing crazy. All right, we'll take a couple more. Quinn. 
It's good, B. Uh, t- take me through what the last 16 hours has been for Bradley Bill. I mean, frustrations on the floor and off from all of you guys. But, you know, from last night to today at practice, what has been the, the, the story of your last 16 hours? Well, I'm always a guy who I'm very religious, biblical. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says you never let your anger carry over to the next day or the next morning. You know, so today's a new day. The sun came up, the sun's out. You know, it's a new day. You know, we're good. My emotions are high. You know, I'm energetic today. Uh, last night, I was frustrated. I think everybody's frustrated. Everybody's pissed off. And I, I will say I didn't talk to you guys because I was still in the building. I was watching film. So don't think that I was I, I wasn't too mad to where I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, but it was mad to the extent of like, why aren't we, why aren't we getting it? Like, why aren't we just getting over the hump? Why aren't we finishing these games? And I have to look at myself, like that's on me to do. That's what my job is to do as you know, the star on this team, as a leader on this team, I have to close out games in the fourth. You know, uh, but a lot of times I try to play devil's advocate and try to say, okay, well, it shouldn't necessarily always come down to hero ball. Right. So, okay, how can we hold on to these leads? How can we sustain what we've been doing? Uh, you know, how can we put together a run? How can we put together a couple of stops? Like, what is it? Uh, and so it's, you know, your mind is just racing, 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 racing. Uh, I think the beauty of our team is that everybody wants to try to figure out what it is. You know, everybody wants to figure out how they can do better, how they can contribute. And I think that's a good thing. It's not, you know, it's, it's tough because we're on board, you know, and we're looking at it like, damn, like it's something we've got to give. Uh, but at the same time, man, it's a, it's a blessing, man. You look at it as it's an adverse time. You know, you find out who you really are during these tough times. Uh, you find out what type of team you are, what type of character you have as a man, as a player. You know, are you just going to allow this to affect the rest of the year? Are you going to do something about it? You're going to be mad, make a change about it, be mad, and, you know, get better. Uh, or you can just be mad and, you know, kind of let this affect the rest of our year. So uh, it's, for me, it's, you know, when I'm at the gym, you know, I leave that energy at the gym. When I go home, I'm with my wife and my kids, and, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm dialed down. So the last 16 hours were crazy from the game till probably leaving the building and getting home. But, you know, I wake up today, today's a new day. Everybody's getting better. Uh, it's another opportunity for us to get better, so. And a quick follow-up, what would you like to see, I guess, on both sides of the ball that would make it easier for all of you guys, not just you, but your teammates? Like, what, what would you like to see different? And I know it's like a communication and things of that nature, but, like, what, what would be your keys to, like, this, I think, would work if we tried this. We could, we could be way better here. It's tough, bro. It's, it's honestly tough because you can't pinpoint one, like, Thing that's causing us to lose like it's it's a few little things that, that add up to bigger things uh throughout the course of the game like me i turn the ball away too much whether it's in the beginning of the game or in the fourth so you know for me it's okay is it better to get a shot up every time 100 percent. you know get a shot up every time down the floor versus turn the ball away uh, and you know is it should we switch one through four should we switch one through five you know it's I don't know. It's it's not just one thing we can pinpoint. Uh, I think that's the toughest part about it. But the beauty of it is, we know what the little things are, and it's, it's you know putting the lineups out there, putting guys out there who are you know pretty much do what coach is asking. You know, and I think he's he's searching a lot, and you know, and it's it's up to us to go out there and you know show them what we're capable of doing. You know, coaches, coaches playing 10 plus guys, which we know doesn't necessarily happen in the league, you know, so he's, he's trying to find guys to get minutes to and, you know, to, to be able to share, share some of this weight. Um, but, you know, it's going to come a point to where he's going to cut it back and he's only going to want guys who are going to play hard, guys who play smart and, you know, who basically just play the game the right way. You know, anybody who's trying to go get personal accolades or who's caught up in themselves, Coach is done with, you know, we're not having that. So, you know, those days are long behind us. We're trying to be a great team that's great character guys who win, work hard, and got some dog. And 